Vectors are an extremely useful thing in calculus and physics, and vectors have a lot of uh, weight when it comes to Calc 3 especially, and in physics. So the idea of vectors is very, very important, especially if you want to be uh, like an engineer or a physicist or something like that. So let's talk all about vectors, and this is your introduction to what vectors are. And basically, a vector is just a thing that has magnitude and direction. Uh, that's it, that's a very general example. And it's very important that you have these two things. If you just had magnitude, and I'll talk about what magnitude means in a second, we call that a scalar. So magnitude is just a number that represents a thing. For example, speed. Speed is a scalar because we can only describe its magnitude. For example, if you were driving down the road going 100 miles an hour, well, you probably need to slow down, but all we can really say is that your speed, which is a scalar, is 100 or has a magnitude of 100. It doesn't tell you which way you're going. It doesn't tell you which direction you're headed. All I know is that your speedometer says 100. And that's where vectors come in. So if you were driving down the road, going 100 miles an hour south, well then that would be a vector because I could have a magnitude, which is your speed, and the direction that you're going. And this is usually how that's represented. So a vector, and if I'm only using two dimensions, then I'm only going to use A and B. If you're doing three dimensions, I'll need A, B, and C, or four dimensions, or as many dimensions as you want, you'll need that many letters. But basically, A and B are just two real numbers that signify the direction. So let me give you an example. Let's say that our vector was one comma two. And basically, this just means one in the x direction and two in the y direction. So if I graphed this vector, well, I would go one in the x direction, and I would go two in the y direction, and then from the origin, I would draw an arrow. So it's kind of like a line segment. Um, and this thing I just drew represents this vector. And so I'm going one in the x direction and two in the y direction. It's kind of like a point you're connecting with the origin, at least in this example. Now that doesn't tell you anything about the magnitude. So what is the magnitude of this vector? Well, it's the length of the vector. So remember I said that vectors need magnitude and direction. So the direction the vector is pointing, well, that's the direction. And the magnitude is the length of the arrow that I drew. Well, how on earth am I going to figure out the length of this arrow? Well, we can use a little bit of geometry here. If I just imaginary, imagine, eh, if I just imagine that this is a triangle, this is a little right triangle. Well, then this is a right triangle with sides one and two, and I know how to find the hypotenuse of a right triangle, right? It's just a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse. So if I just plug these numbers in, that's one squared plus two squared equals c squared, that's one plus four equals c squared, five equals c squared, which means c's got to be the square root of 5, which means this vector has length, or it has magnitude, square root of 5. Okay? Now, uh, you don't have to go through this process every time. I could have just used the formula for magnitudes of vectors. And you'll definitely want to remember this because it definitely will be asked on your test. So the length or the magnitude, and you can do that little derivation that I just did right there if you want, but you don't have to do that each time. And 
I should note that sometimes you're gonna see it like this, where I drew like absolute value signs around the vector, or you might see it like, um, like absolute value signs and like something like this. Uh, or you might see it with like a double absolute value signs. There's a whole bunch of ways to write this, but the basic formula is just the square root of a squared plus b squared. It's the same thing I just did without doing all the steps. So if you just remember that the magnitude of a vector is just the square root of the sum of the components squared. So I could have just done it right here and just done the square root of one squared plus two squared is the square root of one plus four is the square root of five. That's a little bit quicker than drawing my triangle and figuring out the sides. So you'll definitely want to remember the formula for the magnitude of a vector or the length of a vector. Now there's some algebra we can do with vectors. And the basic algebra things we can do with vectors are add them and multiply by a scalar. So if I want to add vectors, let's just say I've got two vectors, vector u and vector v. And you'll notice this time I introduced a little bit of different notation. I drew little arrows over them. That simply means that u and v are vectors. So sometimes you'll see little arrows drawn over them and sometimes you won't. I just felt like doing it here just to show you everything you might run into. So if I want to add vectors u and vector v, well, I simply add their components. So let's just say that vector u is components u1 and u2, and vector v has components v1 and v2. Don't worry, I'll give you a real example in just a second. Well, I simply add the components if I'm adding the vectors. So my new vector will have components u1 plus v1, comma, u2 plus v2. Let me give you a real example. I just wanted to show you what you're gonna see in your textbook. So let's just say I've got two vectors, and I'll call vector u, let's just use that vector I used before, one comma two, and I've got another vector v, and vector v is gonna be five comma nine, I don't know. And I wanna do u plus v. Well, that simply means I'm going to add the respective components. I'm gonna add the x components and I'm gonna add the y components. So I just add one plus five will be six in the x component and two plus nine will be 11 in the y component. And there you have it. That's how to add vectors. It's very, very simple to do. You can also do what's called multiplying by a scalar. And remember, a scalar is just a number. So my scalar, I'm just gonna call it C, C for constant or C for a number. And if I multiply a scalar times a vector, well, that's simply, and I guess I should define V again. Let's just say V is V1 comma V2. I simply just distribute that constant through. So just like if you had the distributed rule from algebra, you would just distribute a number to every term. Here, my new vector would be C times V1 comma C times V2. Again, let me give you a concrete example. Let me just say my vector V, I'll just use the same vector if you don't mind, if I can remember it, five comma nine. And I wanna multiply by a scalar and my scalar is just going to be 2, something easy. Okay, so all I have to do is I just have to do 2 times v. That's 2 times this vector, 5 comma 9. And all I do is just distribute. So I do 5 times 2 is 10, and I do 2 times 9 is 18. So that is my new vector. And those are the two basic arithmetic, arithmetic or 
algebra things you can do with vectors, you can add them together, or you can multiply by a scalar. And I'm just going to show you a couple of properties here to finish off this video. Oh, and you might be asking, well, I can add vectors and I can multiply by a scalar. Can you multiply vectors? And the answer is yes. And there's two ways to do it, namely the dot product and the cross product. We're going to leave those for a later video because that's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit ahead of what we're doing here. So I just want to show you a few properties and then we'll cut this video off. So a few properties of vectors. If I've got the addition of two vectors, a plus b, that's the same as doing b plus a. So addition of vectors is commutative, just like addition of numbers. If I have vectors a plus b and c added in parentheses, so all of these are vectors, I'm not going to bother writing the arrow, that's the same as doing a plus b in parentheses and then adding c. So this is the associative property. So the associative property still holds. If I have r, a constant, or a scalar, multiplied by the sum of two vectors, that's the same as distributing that r through. So scalars have the distributive property, or r is a constant, a and b are vectors. And let's do another one. If I have r and s, again, these are real numbers, vector a, that's the same as r vector a plus s vector a, just like you would expect. So, um, Again, real numbers just have the distributive property. And this one, R and S are real numbers. A is a vector. So I have R times S, so this is a number times a vector. This is the same as R times the scalar S times the vector A, or it's the same as S times R times the vector A, just like this. So Basically, I'm saying that scalar multiplication is associative with vectors. Um, again, this last one, not too important. Um, in fact, you don't really need to know these perfectly, uh, and these probably won't be on the test, but they'll certainly be presented in your class, so I just wanted to present them here to you. Uh, you can use these as a reference, and they're probably going to be in your textbook. So this is all of the very vector basic things that you need to know. Uh, I hope you got something out of this video. There'll be more vector videos with more examples. I'm going to do unit vectors and I'm going to do uh, multiplying vectors. That is the dot product and the cross product, which you'll need to know. Um, but for now, this is just your introductory video to what vectors are, how to work with them, and the simple things you can do with vectors. I hope you got something out of it. Please let me know what are the videos you want to see. I put new videos up almost every single day, so please like and subscribe, and have a great day yourself.